much. Uh, tomorrow is a very big day because tomorrow will represent 50 years from the time we planted a beautiful American flag on the moon. And uh, that was a an achievement, possibly one of the great, considered one of the great achievements ever. And we're going a lot further now. We're going to the moon, but we're then going to Mars. And I think very importantly, and all of you folks know that from a standpoint of defense, uh, it's so important. We're going to be doing the Space Force. I assume you guys are all in favor of the Space Force, right? Yes. I'd be very surprised if you weren't, but that's where it's at. We're going to be doing the Space Force. We're very close to getting that completed and operating. It's going to be very exciting. So a lot of things are happening. Uh, we have with us, uh, of course, Buzz Aldrin, who has been an incredible gentleman. I've known him for years, for a long time, and we've been friends for a long time. But just a fantastic, fantastic man. And Michael Collins, you all know, flew Apollo 11 overhead. And it's uh, Aldrin and Armstrong. They walked on the moon. We have... Uh, They're dead moon. Huh? They're dead moon. Yeah, that, that's right. That's, that's, uh, that's for sure. And you have uh, Rick Armstrong, the son, Mark. Uh, it's just incredible families. These are incredible space families. These are incredible men. And honestly, I, I've gotten to know uh, some of the women in the family. These are great women, great men, and uh, frankly, great genes. But tomorrow is a big day. So tomorrow is a day where 50 years, and uh, we also have Jim Breitenstein. And Jim is the head of NASA, as you know. And NASA has done a whole different it's a whole different thing. Jim Bridenstine is somebody that uh, everybody wanted that job because there's a love for space that is, is unparalleled. Mike Pence and myself felt strongly about Jim. We gave him the job, and he's surpassed any of our expectations. Uh, NASA's back. We're having rich guys use it and pay us rent. I like that. I almost like that better, Jim. You want to know the truth. We don't have to put up so much money, but you've been watching a lot of rich guys sending up rockets, and that goes to our credit, and it goes to their credit also, but we like it. And uh, we opened up our fields. When we took it over, they were all covered with grass, and they were broken, and they were in bad shape. The NASA, if you look at uh, Kennedy, you look at down in Florida, you look wherever you want to look. Um, it was not a pretty picture. Uh, they were almost you could say abandoned and now they're in tip-top shape and rockets are going up all the time and we would actually lease rockets from Russia and other countries but from Russia to send people up and we appreciate the whole relationship with Russia but we'll be doing it ourselves we're in a position that uh, we haven't been in for many many years and space to me is important for defense and offense I guess you could say but space, to me, is very important for defense. It's not just about going to the moon and going to Mars, because we don't know what we're going to find on Mars, but it's certainly a trip that's going to be very interesting. Uh, to get to Mars, you have to land on the moon, they say. Any way of going directly without landing on the moon? Is that a possibility? Yes. Well, we need to use the moon as a proving ground, yes. because when we, go to the Mar when we go to Mars, we're going to have to be there for a long period of time. So we need to learn how to live and work on another world. So how long a trip to Mars? How long would it take? It's about a seven-month journey there. The challenge is Earth and Mars are only on the same side of the sun once every 26 months. So we have to be prepared to stay on Mars for long periods of time. We prove that out on the moon, then we go on to Mars. What happens if you miss the timing? They're in deep trouble, right? <laughs> right. Well, we're not going to You don't want to be on that ship. Is no, that sir. You don't want to be on the ship. Go ahead, tell me. What do you think? Uh, you come back and try it again. Yeah, I guess we... <laughs> well, that's a long time. <laughs> ah, that's a long time. How do you feel about it? Mars direct. You like it direct? <laughs> yes. It seems to me more is direct. You're I mean, impatient. I mean, who's, who knows better than these people? Right? <laughs> I mean, you know, they've, they've been doing this stuff for a long time. Uh, what about the concept of Mars direct? So the, the, the challenge is, if we go direct to Mars, um, there's going to be a lot of things that we haven't yet proven out. We need to think about this. We need to use the resources of another world in order to live and work for long periods of time. Uh, the moon has hundreds of millions of tons of water ice that we discovered back in 2009. Water ice represents life support. It's air to breathe, it's water to drink, 
It's also rocket fuel, hydrogen and oxygen, the same rocket fuel that powered the space shuttle. So it's available in hundreds of millions of, there's Mr. President, that's a market. That's an available market where people, some of these commercial guys are interested in going to the moon to utilize that resource for their own stays on the moon. Uh, it could be for tourism. It could be for resources, potentially even platforms. But Jim, isn't it true they haven't really landed that close to that portion of the moon that you're talking about? That's correct. In the Apollo era, we landed in the equatorial regions. So from 1969, the first landing, up until 2008 and 2009, many people believed the moon was bone dry. Now we know that there's hundreds of millions of tons of water ice. We need to learn how to use it so we can live and work. And then ultimately that gives us the opportunity to go to Mars. So you feel that really landing on the moon first and figuring it out and getting ready to launch, and you would like to, you really feel launching, you're essentially launching from the moon to Mars. Uh, I think, sir, the best way to think about it is we learn how to live and work on the moon, but we launch to Mars from a space station that we have in orbit around the moon, a space station we call Gateway, right. which gives us access to the moon, but ultimately it becomes the deep space transport that takes us to Mars. With a Gateway, we will have more access to more parts of the solar system with humans than we could ever have otherwise, because from the moon, it's very easy, because the moon's gravity well is small compared to Earth. So what we aggregate at the Gateway enables us to go further. Just so you know, Jim Bridenstine was a great congressman who was with me most of the time. Not all the time. It was not that easy a decision for me, but that's okay. You know that. You know what I'm talking about. Uh, and ultimately, once I got to know him, and once he got to know me, it was a whole different ball game. And uh, you've done a fantastic job. You really have. Sir, and you love it. Yes, I mean, sir. more importantly, he loves it. The reason he's doing well, where's Mike? Mike Pence, where's Mike? Mike, 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 Mike come here. Yes, sir. Uh, tell me what you think of the job Jim's doing. What NASA is doing? Tell me, come on over. What do you think of the job they're doing? Here? Well, uh, thank you, Mr. President, and uh, uh, I, I share your enthusiasm uh, for our NASA Administrator Jim Bridenstine. He's done a phenomenal job, really uh, putting into practice your vision for reviving American leadership in human space exploration. But, uh, but to be able to be here in the Oval Office with you and the First Lady, with Buzz Aldrin. Mike Collins, uh, and the family of Neil Armstrong uh, um, uh, as we celebrate uh, the 50th anniversary of the Apollo 11 mission is, uh, is very humbling for me. I, I thank you for your leadership. You revived the National Space Council. You asked us to lead it. Uh, we have really uh, revived American leadership in space. Uh, we're launching a space force to make sure that we can defend this nation in the outer reaches of space. But because of your leadership, I know everyone gathered here, these families, these astronauts, uh, are excited to know that within the next year, we will be able to return American astronauts to space on American rockets from American soil. Uh, and that's all a result of your leadership. And maybe you could just, wear, just hold up your hands a little bit for the media seat. Uh, the family of Neil Armstrong, where, where is where is our family? Yeah. Come on, hold up your hands because we want to just sort of segment it out. They're all sort of one family. What I want you to do is good. Buzz, you're here. Please. Here. Just introduce your family, please. That's your family. This is my lovely vice president. That's right. <laughs> Chief of staff. My family is uh, from Hawaii to Florida to Los Angeles. Yeah. They're, but they're watching, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, they're watching. So, um, do you have any questions, folks? Uh, one thing I think before we go, I, I do want to ask one question of either Mike or Jim. Uh, private guys, wealthy guys, are spending a lot of money with you right now, a lot. Uh, I assume they're using the facilities, they're leasing the facilities, yes, they're sir. paying money to set off their rockets. You can judge them a lot. They have so much, they don't know what to do with it. And they like rockets. Thank God I don't like rockets that much. <laughs> I, like it. I like it the way we're doing it. Yes, but sir. I also like it the way they're doing it. Uh, how much of the work that you're doing is privately financed? And because I see uh, whether it's Bezos or uh, I could name yes, sir. many. Yes, okay. sir. Uh, you have many involved. How much of the work that you're doing is private versus government-funded and researched? 
So right now on the International Space Station, we are commercially resupplying the International Space Station by buying a service from these commercial providers who have invested their own money because they're looking for markets, they're looking for business that is not necessarily us, which means our costs go down and our access goes up. But that's resupply to the International Space Station. Now we're doing commercial crew to the International Space Station. Um, and the, the, the value is this. And sir, this is, um, this is a public-private partnership where we're going to have the opportunity in the future to have NASA be one customer of many customers in a very robust marketplace in low Earth orbit where the costs come down, access goes up, but we also want to make sure, and this is important, we have numerous providers that are competing against each other on cost and innovation, and as they compete, our costs will continue to go down, access will go up. The goal being, um, we want more access to space than ever before, um, and that's ultimately how we're going to go to the moon, that's how we're going to get to Mars, and that there are markets out there that are not NASA, and that's a good thing for our country. And what impact are you having on defense, our defense industry? So NASA has um, a lot of technologies that we develop that the Department of Defense, uh, in fact, takes advantage of. And that goes back to uh, people remember Alan Shepard launching into space. Well, he launched on an ICBM. Uh, so there's a lot of uh, back and forth between what NASA does for science and technology and what the Department of Defense does for the national security interests of the country. But you know this, and I've been very public about it. Um, the United States Air Force is an amazing institution. The challenge is their budgets are pretty steady, and yet the greatest threats that the Air Force deals with are in space and cyberspace. And these are areas where the Air Force um, is going to run out of capacity, in my view, from a national security perspective. So we need to take that element and create a separate space force where we can organize, train, and equip a cadre of professionals that can keep us safe from a space perspective. And by doing that, we will have more opportunity to explore space than we otherwise would. Great. Fantastic job. Thanks, so, sir. Michael Collins flew Apollo 11. What's the difference with, that's a long time ago, with that and, let's say, uh, what they're doing today? Because you're abreast of what they're doing today, Mike. Well, I think uh, the whole system has advanced a lot more. You had, uh, were talking a minute ago about private funds, and I think that's wonderful. Uh, the more the merrier. Uh, the money that uh, Musk and, uh, and Bezos uh, put, take out of their own pocket, they put into the federal kitty is all one lump as far as I'm concerned. Maybe the budgeteers don't quite agree with that, but I think it's just the more the merrier. Private funds, appropriated funds, we need them both. And right. Let's go with both of them. So you like that whole concept? Yes. Do you see a big advancement from so many years ago with Apollo 11? Do you see a tremendous advancement when you see what's happened? Like Elon Musk, I see where his uh, uh, propulsion systems come back to Earth. I had never seen that before. They come back standing up, and that means you use them again, I guess. But, uh, that was unthinkable a long time ago. Yes, yeah, so that was uh, one shot, and, and they fell into the ocean, uh, a tremendous waste of, uh, of, of five good rocket motors for every uh, Saturn V that you uh, sent up. I think that is the most dramatic uh, new idea, the, the dramatic reusability. Right. Dramatic. I mean, how many things in our life do we use once and then throw away? Right. Too many. Maybe. Maybe that reusability doctrine could be a little more widespread in the rest of our economy. That's a very good point. Very good point. Hey, Mr. Yes, President, just, just to reinforce your point, the President signed Space Policy Directive 1, saying that America was going to return to the moon and then to Mars. That's one of our first acts in this administration. But the, pres the President has also taken action to streamline regulations for private space exploration. I mean, what the President's vision is that we will continue to have American leadership in space. Some of that will come from NASA, some of that will come as a part of our national defense, but much of it will come by unleashing the entrepreneurial energy uh, of American space entrepreneurs, and, and all of it represents what I know all of these families are excited about, is renewed American leadership in human space exploration. And it all comes to articulating and putting into practice your vision, Mr. President. Thank you very much, Mike. And Buzz, maybe say a few words. You've been watching the space program very closely. You've been watching what we're doing. And uh, what a career you've had, one of the great careers. Uh, what would you say? 
Uh, frankly, I've been a little disappointed in the last 10, 15 years. We were able to achieve so much early. Right. Uh, maybe we, because of uh, conflicts in Southeast Asia, we had to terminate uh, the Apollo they program and, and moved on other directions. Right. But uh, in the last 50 years, we had a rocket, a Saturn V, right. and it took a command module, that was Mike's spacecraft, and the lunar module was Neil and Mike's. But we all went together. Right. Then we got into the lander, we landed, and we joined up. That was my expertise, rendezvous, and we came back. Now we have a number one rocket right now in the U.S., and we have a number one spacecraft. And they cannot get into lunar orbit with significant maneuvering capability. And that's a great disappointment to me. How do you feel about that, Jim? We're working on it, as a matter of fact. Um, so the Orion crew capsule is an amazing crew capsule, and we need it to go to the moon uh, within five years, which, of course, is the direction that we're on right now. Um, but when we're there, I think the gateway, it's going to attach to a small module in orbit around the moon called the gateway. Think of it as a small space station. Right. And that's going to give us what we call Delta V. That's that maneuvering capability to go down to low lunar orbit and then back up on a lander. And so those are the, those are the pieces of the architecture that we're working on. Well, I'd like to have you also listen to the other side because some people would like to do it a different way. Yes, sir. All right, so you'll listen to Buzz and Always. some of the other people. Because yes, they also feel, and I mean, I know this has been going on for a little while, and we're so advanced, but I would like to hear the other side also. Right? Yes, sir. Okay. I'd like to maybe say something on behalf of your family, please. Great family. Yes, sir. Um, I think the, the other real benefit of space that is something we haven't talked about now is the inspiration that it provides for all the kids out there uh, not just in the U.S., but all around the world, to focus on achieving their dreams, studying science and math and, and engineering. And I've, met, I've heard from so many people that have come to me and said, I was inspired to be what I am because of what I saw in the Apollo program. And that, the value of that is, 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 is tremendous, and uh, I think we need more of that. And so. I'm really hoping that uh, you know days like today will help do that, and, and with the increased uh, uh, activity in space that we're all talking about here, will all help that. Well, you have a great family. Thank you very much. And you know, one of the things we're bringing the glamour back to it because it lost the glamour, it lost everything. If you would have seen these fields when we took over. Really, you started about a year, year and a half ago. When we took over, it was unbelievable. It looked like an abandoned town. And uh, now there's, uh, there's beauty. There's beauty, and there's a lot of things happening. A lot of really great things are happening, so we're very proud of that. Uh, thank you all very much. We appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, you, very, much. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Steve, go ahead. Steve, go ahead. Steve, go ahead. You shot down the drone yesterday. There's no doubt about it. Right. Uh, no and doubt about it. No, we, we shot it down. And, uh, of course, I'm sitting here behind the desk in the Oval Office. But, uh, John, tell me, please. John Bolton, you're there. Yeah, there, there's uh, no question that this was an Iranian drone. And uh, the uh, USS Boxer took it out, as the President announced yesterday, because it posed a threat to the ship and its crew. It was entirely the right thing to do. And are you concerned about a broader clash with Iran in the Strait of Hormuz? No, not at all. We have the greatest people in the world. We have the greatest equipment in the world. We have the greatest ships, most deadly ships. We don't want to have to use them, but they're the most deadly ships ever conceived. And uh, we are not uh, — we hope for their sake they don't do anything foolish. If they do, they will pay a price like nobody's ever paid a price. President okay. Trump, you said Thank you were unhappy with the chance. Um, however, the chat was just repeating. No, I, you know what, what I'm said, what I'm unhappy what you with. Said in your tweet. You know what you I'm un back? You know what I'm unhappy with? I'm unhappy with the fact that a congresswoman can hate our country. I'm unhappy with the fact that a congresswoman can say anti-Semitic things. I'm unhappy with the fact that a congresswoman, in this case a different congresswoman, can call our country and our people garbage. That's what I'm unhappy so with. Unhappy Those with people in North Carolina, that stadium was packed. It was a record crowd, and I could have filled it 10 times, as you know. Those are incredible people. Those are incredible patriots. 
But I'm unhappy when a congresswoman goes and says, I'm going to be the president's nightmare. She's going to be the president's nightmare. She's lucky to be where she is, let me tell you. And the things that she has said are a disgrace to our country. Thank you very much, hey, everybody. Thank you, 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 everybody. Thank you,
And uh, you know how I feel about Prime Minister Abi. He's a very special guy also. So uh, if, if they need me, I'm there. Hopefully, they can work it out. But they do have tension. There's no question about it. Trade tension. Okay? Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you very much.